Hi viewers, this is Jay Swami, Assistant Professor of Zoology. In this class, we are going to discuss food chains and the food web. Apart from this topic, we are going to discuss introduction to the topic, definition of food chains and the food web, different types of food chains, trophic levels and the food web and their related examples. Let us start with the introductory part of the food chains. In an ecosystem, plants and animals are linked together by their nutritional requirements. The organisms which have same food habits belong to one food level or trophic level. The plants or producers form the first trophic level. Herbivores form the second trophic level. And carnivores form the third trophic level. Thus, food from one trophic level reaches to another trophic level. And in this way, there is a formation of the chain. Otherwise, the chain is established. These trophic levels are linked to one another, forming a food chain. In the ecosystem, green plants alone are able to trap the solar energy and convert it into chemical energy through the process of the photosynthesis. The chemical energy is locked up in the various organic components like carbohydrates, proteins and the lipids. They are stored in the green plants. All other living organisms depend upon green plants for their energy the efficiency of plants in any given area in capturing solar energy sets the upper limit to long-term energy flow and biological activity in the community. Now, a food chain may be defined as a transfer of energy and nutrients through a succession of organisms through repeated process of eating and being eaten. Food chain initial link is a green plant or a producer which produces chemical energy available to consumers. In any food chain, energy flows from producers that is green plants, primary consumers, otherwise the herbivores and followed by secondary consumers which are primary carnivores and tertiary consumers which are called as the top carnivores or secondary carnivores. At each step of food transfer, a large portion of potential energy is lost as the heat from one trophic level to the another trophic level from producers to herbivores, herbivores to carnivores, carnivores to top carnivores. In nature, there are three types of food chains, namely grazing food chain, parasitic food chain, saprophytic or detritus food chain, grazing food chain, parasitic food chain and the detritus type of food chain. Let us see one by one. Grazing food chain. The grazing food chain starts from green plants and from autotrophs it goes to herbivores that is the primary consumers then to primary carnivores which are the secondary consumers and then to secondary carnivores which are the tertiary consumers and so on. 
herbivores are actually the grazing animals play an important role in this kind of food chain the food chain begins with green plants as the primary producers of the ecosystem and the green plants are eaten by the herbivores like the cattle rabbit deer insects etc the herbivores are eaten by the primary carnivores which in turn are eaten by the secondary carnivores when energy flows from producers to consumers in grazing food chain only 20 to 30% of the net primary production 20 to 30% of the net primary production is used as food by the grazing animals and the rest is passed into the soil as waste material or as dead bodies which is available as food to decomposers the grass production of a green plant in an ecosystem may meet three fates it may be oxidized in respiration it may be eaten by herbivorous animals and after the death and decay of producers it may be utilized by the decomposers and converters and finally released into the environment in herbivores the assimilated food can be stored as carbohydrates proteins and the fats and transformed into much more complex organic molecules the energy for these transformations is supplied through respiration as in autotrophs the energy is energy in herbivores also meets three roots they are respiration decay of organic matter by microbes and consumption by the carnivores likewise when the secondary carnivores or tertiary consumers eat primary carnivores the total energy assimilated by primary carnivores or grass tertiary production follows the same course and its disposition into respiration decay and further consumption by other carnivores is entirely similar to that of herbivores always the grazing food chains are linear here there is a best example where we'll see the green plants they are the producers and this is the primary consumer caterpillar and this is a furthermore secondary consumer frog and this is a tertiary consumer snake and the final consumer owl that is the green plants they produce the food material this is the producer and the green plant leaves or flowers they are eaten by caterpillar and these caterpillars are being eaten by frog and frogs are eaten by snakes or snakes are eaten by birds like the owl otherwise we may write many examples which are starts with the trees rats snakes and hawk are all otherwise trees insects lizard and hawk otherwise we can also write the example like grass grasshopper small birds and the hawks so like that we can write different kinds of examples which are uh, naturally available and here we may also differentiate the linear food chain which is called as a grazing food chain into two kinds one is a terrestrial food chain another one is a aquatic food chain terrestrial food chain and the aquatic food chain here you can observe the terrestrial food chain which are the producers starts with the plants primary consumers herbivores secondary consumers here carnivore and tertiary consumer carnivore and quaternary consumer it is a bird so here terrestrial food chain starts with the green plants they are eaten by a grasshopper like animal and they are eaten by the rat rat eaten by the snake snake eaten by the 
hawk otherwise the eagle the same way aquatic food chain here the phytoplanktons which are the major source of the production of the energy in the aquatic environment it is eaten by the zooplankton primary consumer it is eaten by the small fish secondary consumer there is a large fish tertiary consumer and furthermore there is a shark or dolphin so they are the quaternary consumers so here the best examples are terrestrial food chain and the aquatic food chain especially this is the marine food chain which is seen in the oceans in the seas then come to the trophic levels trophic level can be defined as the position that an organism occupies in a food chain or a group of organisms in a community that occupy the same position in the food chains that is nothing but the trophic level so here producers green plants they occupy a position in the food chain that is nothing but the first trophic level and here there are many herbivorous animals which are occupied the second trophic level and here birds carnivores which occupied the third trophic level and it is a top carnivore exist in the fourth trophic level that is the position of an organism that occupies in a food chain is the trophic level or feeding level generally the food chains may appear independent of each other but they are interconnected at various trophic levels so that will be discussed in the food web the grazing food chain are also called as the predator food chains the grazing food chains are also known as predator food chains and it is obvious that much of the energy flow in the grazing food chain can be described in terms of trophic levels in terms of trophic levels here we will see some examples trophic level it is the position of an organism occupies in a food chain each link in the chain represents one trophic level here the phytoplank uh, phyto so here there is a terrestrial ecosystem it is a aquatic ecosystem so we will see two examples right starts with the first start with the uh, terrestrial ecosystem grass first trophic level grasshopper second trophic level frog third trophic level snake fourth trophic level eagle fifth trophic level in the same way in the aquatic environment phytoplankton first trophic level zooplankton second trophic level small fish third trophic level large fish fourth trophic level and the shark fifth trophic level so each and every position of an organism which occupies in a food chain is the trophic level so whenever the energy transported from one trophic level to the another trophic level there is a gradual loss or gradual decrease in the energy so in the form of heat here we can observe that this is also again discussed in the uh, energy flow here this is a source of the energy solar radiation so the solar radiation which is trapped by the autotrophs stored in the autotrophs and it will be utilizes utilizing the energy for its own purposes and something will be lost through the respiration something through the excretion and remaining amount some of the remaining amount it is transported to herbivores from herbivores it loss through some uh, some energy loss through respiration some energy through the excreta so some energy goes to primary carnivore and then to secondary carnivore and go on so here from one trophic level to the another trophic level there is a gradual decrease in the energy which reaches from one trophic level to the another trophic level we should remember so here this is a solar energy so some of this lost through the heat 
some of it is entrapped by the plants and out of this some of this again lost through the heat some reaches the primary consumers and to secondary consumer tertiary and so on from one trophic level to the another trophic level there is a gradual decrease in the energy which is lost through otherwise is lost in the form of heat and coming to the second type of uh, food chain parasitic food chain it goes from large organisms to smaller ones without outright killing as in the case of the predator they begin with green plants then to herbivores in which number of parasites live like predator they don't kill the host at a time because the death of the host kills the parasite itself here there is a large organism like the zebra within the zebra there is a parasitic nematode and within the nematode there is every possibility of living of a bacteria within the bacteria also some viruses like the bacteriophages they can also live this is a best example for the parasitic food chains so another example it starts with a tree and fruit eating birds and lice on the body of the birds and fungi so this is also another example for the parasitic food chains and coming to the third one third type of food chain is the detritus food chain the dead organic remains including metabolic wastages and exudates derived from the grazing food chain are generally termed as the detritus the energy contained in detritus is not lost in ecosystem as a whole rather it serves as a source of energy for a group of organisms called detrivores that are separate from the grazing food chain the food chain so formed is called as the detritus food chain the organic waste material and dead bodies of producers and consumers from detritus food chain the detritus is the food for detrivores the detritus food chain begins with microorganisms to detrivores and then to predators the energy flow is continuous and more in detritus food chain than grazing food chain detritus food chain forms an important component in the energy flow in the ecosystem the best examples are dead organic matter dead organic matter that is a plant or animal then to fungi or bacteria then earthworm then frog then small bird otherwise dead organic material fungi or bacteria small fish large fish and the birds so like that there are various examples here this chain started with the dead leaves eaten by the wood louse and it is eaten by the blackbird and here fallen leaves eaten by the earthworm earthworm eaten by the blackbird blackbird handled by the hawk so detritus detrivores small carnivores and the top carnivores it moves like this and here there is a uh, interrelation in between the grazing food chain and as well as the detritus food chain in some ecosystems more energy flows through the detritus food chain than the uh, than through the grazing food chain in detritus food chain the energy flow remains as a continuous passage rather than a stepwise flow between discrete entities the organisms in the detritus food chain are many and include algae fungi bacteria slime molds actinomycetes protozoa etc detritus organisms ingest pieces of partially decomposed organic matter digest them partially and after extracting some of the chemical energy in the food to run their metabolism excrete the remainder in the form of simpler organic molecules 
the waste from one organism can be immediately utilized by a second one which repeat the process gradually the complex organic molecules present in the organic wastages or dead tissues are broken down to much simpler compounds sometimes to carbon dioxide and water and the entire left are humus in a normal environment the humus is quite stable and forms an essential part of the soil and here you can see there is a grazing food chain dead and excretive material from the grazing food chain that is the plants and animals that reaches the decomposers and again decomposers decompose the food material and that reaches the soil soil animals which consumes other living soil organisms here organic material permanently incorporated into the sediments soil and rocks and again it is utilized by the soil organisms consumed by carnivores in the grazing food chain again it reaches the grazing food chain here there are certain differences in between grazing food chain and the dead food chain grazing food chain starts from the living green plants that is producers acquiring the first trophic level whereas detritus food chain starts from the dead organic matter and decomposers called detrivores as the first trophic level a much lesser fraction of energy flows through this type of food chain in the grazing food chain whereas in the detritus food chain a much larger fraction of energy flows through this type of food chain and it binds to in the grazing food chain it binds to inorganic nutrients and where in the detritus food chain it releases the inorganic nutrients bound in organic matter and finally grazing food chain directly dependent on the influx of solar radiation whereas detritus food chain it depends upon the energy for the food chain comes from the organic waste exudates and the dead matter which is generally called as the detritus this is all about the uh, food chain definition and different kinds of food chains and their related examples and come to the food web many food chains exist in an ecosystem but as a matter of fact these food chains are not independent in ecosystem one organism does not depend uh, wholly on the other the resource resources are shared specially at the beginning of the chain the food chains interlinked with each other in the form of a food web food webs are very important in maintaining the stability of ecosystem in the nature for example the marsh plants are eaten by the variety of insects birds mammals and fishes and some of the animals are eaten by several predators similarly in the grazing food chain of grassland grass eaten by mouse eaten by snakes snakes eaten by owls sometimes mice are not eaten by snakes but directly by owls so in this absence of rabbit grass may be eaten by the mouse hence the absence of rabbit would not disturb the ecosystem as the alternate organism would help to maintain the stability this type of interrelationship interlinks the individuals of the whole com- community in this way food chains become interlinked a complex of interrelated food chains makes up a food web food web maintains the stability of the ecosystem the greater the number of alternative pathways the more stable is the community of living things a balanced ecosystem is essential for the survival of all living organisms here now uh, we are seeing this is a grain grass and carrot all these are the producers it may be eaten by the rabbit or it may be eaten by the mouse grass may be eaten by grass and grain may be eaten by the grasshopper and here the grass directly grains directly eaten by the bird otherwise it may depend upon the grasshopper and the mouse eaten by the owl or grasshopper may be eaten by the owl so some of them are 
simpler and some of them are very complex see here this is a grasshopper this is a mouse and this is a rabbit all of them are the uh, primary consumers here the grasshopper may be eaten by the bird or eaten by the frog but both of them get eaten by the snake and here the mouse may be eaten by the owl and here rabbit or mouse both of them get eaten by the fox here furthermore complex food web is found where these are the green plants primary is our producers and here primary consumers are pika bird frog uh, butterfly squirrel and the mule deer and whereas here secondary consumers are pine marten black trapped jack rabbit raven western whiptail and ring tail cat like that here the tertiary consumers coyote mountain lion and bobcat so all of them interlinked if you see one squirrel it may be eaten by ring tail raven and jack rabbit and as well as a pine marten like that all the food chains are interlinked together to form a food web so this maintains the stability of the ecosystem this is all about the food chains and the food webs and their related examples thank you thank you one and all